How do I play my class well? This is such a subjective question because every class in EverQuest 2 is so unique and each class has its own purpose. Welcome to Bear Necessities and my name is Bear and today we're going to be exploring spell efficiency. There's one thing that every class does. It doesn't matter if you're a tank, a healer, a DPS, or a utility or support. You press damage buttons. Once you've done your role's duty, maybe thrown out a few heals, wards, debuffs, buffs to your group mates, you're going to press some damage buttons. And today I want to talk generally about some high level ways of calculating your most efficient damage buttons. And I'll also try to talk about some of the caveats that are involved. I will not be discussing gearing or how to build your character in this video, because honestly, that stuff can change over time as they rebalance gear, uh, change how certain stats benefit you, etc. So let's just talk about the here and now. You have your character, you're going on a raid tonight, and you want to make sure that you're pressing your buttons efficiently. How do I know how efficient those buttons are? Honestly, it's a pretty simple formula. You just take the amount of damage or healing the ability does, and you divide it by the cast time of the ability plus the recovery. Recovery in EQ2 is essentially the global cooldown, which is 0.5 seconds by default. However, there are some classes that get reduced recovery, so we want to make sure to factor this in. Alright, so let's take something pretty simple like Strike of Consistency. We can inspect it, take the damage, divide it by the cast time plus recovery, and boom! Here's your efficiency. This is a super basic example though, so let's start diving into some more complex situations. For example, what if a spell has a range of damage? Well, one simple way is to calculate the efficiency of the high end and the efficiency of the low end, and then you can get the average efficiency from there. So we essentially just do the formula twice and then take the average. All right, so let's take something like Ball of Fire. Let's take the lowest amount, then divide it by the cast and recovery. Then let's take the highest amount, divide it by the cast and recovery. Let's add these efficiencies together and divide them by two. And now we have the average efficiency of Ball of Fire. Next, let's talk about triggered abilities. This is actually pretty simple. You can just take the damage readout and multiply it by the number of triggers, and that's your damage. This is assuming that all the triggers do go off by the time you cast the spell again, or it expires. If on average you're only getting three triggers instead of five, then make sure to multiply it by three. We want to be realistic in our numbers. And finally, let's talk about dots or damage over time abilities. The calculations for this are pretty simple as well, but I do want to talk about some caveats. So if we look at the wizard spell, Icy Spears, it does a certain amount of damage up front. Then we add in the amount of damage from the damage over time component and multiply that by the number of times that the dot ticks. So it's essentially upfront damage plus dot damage times ticks divided by cast plus recovery. And then we have the efficiency of our dot. All right, the caveats. So this efficiency is assuming that we let the dot fully tick out. In the case of Icy Spears, that means we are waiting until it fully ticks down and this is our efficiency. However, a lot of dots have a recast timer that is less than the dot duration, meaning we can overwrite our dot. Well, if we do overwrite our dot, then that means we're actually getting less dot ticks, so our efficiency will go down if we overwrite the dot. So now things get complicated, and this is actually one of the reasons I really enjoy some of the complexities of EQ2 because we now need to figure out if it's more worth it to let the dot tick out at the expense of fewer overall cast of the spell over the duration of encounter, or is it worth casting the spell more times because of a high upfront damage component, making it more efficient over the entire fight. This type of efficiency calculation does involve a bit of testing and maybe hitting a target dummy, but if you want to calculate the efficient of efficiency of both, it's pretty simple. On the first calculation, of course, you just add in the dot component times the number of ticks for the full duration. And in your second, you just reduce the number of ticks by reducing the duration of the spell to the recast of the spell. All right, moving on from dots, let's factor in targets. So we've primarily been talking about a single target, 
but if you want to factor in uh, some of your green spells or maybe your blue spells, you need to factor in targets so that if you encounter a two target encounter or a three target encounter, you can actually see what your efficiency is on those as well. So if you have a blue or green, you just take the damage, multiply it by how many targets your damage hits. So it's just damage times targets divided by cast plus recovery. And your efficiency will go way up based on the amount of targets your damage will hit. And that's it. Now that you know how to calculate efficiency, you can throw all your spells into this formula and boom, you know how to play your class the most efficiently, right? Well, not entirely. I will say having this knowledge gets you a large percentage of the way there though. Understanding how efficient your spells are and the order of efficiency is important. After, of course, your utility rolls or keeping aggro on a tank, etc. But there's a ton of nuance that goes into being the most efficient you can be on your class. Let's take a few quick scenarios. As a wizard, Storming Tempest is a super efficient spell, but it's a dot over X amount of seconds. It gets its efficiency from doing lots of damage over time and is more efficient if it fully ticks out. If I'm casting Storming Tempest on a raid boss at 3% life, that's going to make a super efficient spell extremely inefficient. Another example is Ice Shield, which triggers when a tank gets dealt damage. Well, this may fully trigger all the time on your raid paladin taking a bunch of adds, but it may only get one or two triggers for the entire duration of the spell on your highly avoidant monk. Or say maybe you're a ranger and your super efficient bow shot just came off cooldown, but an AOE is due to hit in about five seconds and you have to joust out, it may be more efficient to get two or three melee based combat arts off so that you can use that ranged combat art when you're jousting. There's a ton of other examples I can give, but I can really sum it up by saying the difference between a good player and a great player is way more than running the numbers. It's about being able to evaluate situations and press the right buttons at the right times. Hopefully this is helpful to new and old players alike. And I know there are people out there thinking, well, you're not calculating in crit and crit bonus and crit multiplier and how much damage the spell does if Frigid Gift is up or Precision on Maestro is up. There are tons of other things that you can definitely factor into your efficiency and your efficiency calculations. But I really wanted to start with some baby steps and we can graduate to more complex things later. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you like my content, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later in Norath.